hello me and my orange calcite here isn't he gorgeous isn't he just so bright and pretty i'm in a good place people i've been listening to chapel roan a lot i'm in i'm in a hyped mood things are good and we are going to talk about the dilemma and just long kind of weird sticky but should be fun should be freeing and fun and fancy free process of building a wardrobe that you love. I cannot say that word this early in the video. We're really still just trying to car our way up on this platform, but it's difficult, you know, and it feels like everyone already has it. It's weird. It feels like everyone already has a wardrobe that they love, but everyone's also still shopping. Everyone's somehow doing everything and perfect at everything but that's not true people just have clothes that they like and those are the ones that they choose to display and talk about because you know what else would you do you do the same thing i'm sure but building a wardrobe that you truly love and by that i mean a closet full or an amount of clothes that you feel happy and comfortable with of which you actually wear the majority the majority of the time and that all of which you feel good in and that you can consistently say that you like that doesn't sound like a high standard for a wardrobe but if you are a person um then you know that that's hard to have a closet full of stuff that you're like yes i really truly wear the majority of this stuff and the stuff that I don't wear super often it's for a specific reason like I have a little corner in my closet that's just like costumey stuff um I have a couple like nicer formal dresses that I just don't wear out and about all the time um but other than that I would say most of the stuff I would say like 70 percent which is you know better than I don't remember the statistic it's like you wear I think it's like 20 percent of your closet 90 percent of the time or something I'll put it here but it's absolutely ridiculous and so building a wardrobe where you really do feel like you use all of the stuff that you wear because you like it and you want to wear it is hard because you got a body, you got a budget, you have a mind, you have a taste, it is ever changing, you contain multitudes, but I have kind of locked into a system now for building out my wardrobe, for cleaning it out, for how I make decisions. And the best part about it is that it's fun. It's not anxiety inducing or overwhelming to think about cleaning out my clothes or think about bringing new things into my wardrobe. It's actually fun and fancy free. Like I said, it should be. It's exciting and it's an exploration of like the outfits that I want to wear and the things that I do wear and me and my taste and my comfort level and my style and the things that I gravitate towards and fashion and trends and whatnot. And that's exciting and fun, but I feel like a lot of my clothing acquiring expeditions in my high school and even a little bit like my college years were very like anxiety fueled at a base level they would start out really good and then it would just kind of go downhill and i would leave with some clothes but a lot of times i would leave sweaty and feeling bad about myself so we're getting ahead of ourselves let's start at the beginning of how to build a wardrobe that you love so this is a predictable first step but stay with me because we're gonna delve into it a little bit deeper and talk a little bit more about what it means to make a style Pinterest board. Don't click off. You can use other things, you can use other platforms if you want. Shuffles is a really fun app that I really enjoy using. You can use Pinterest. Lemon8, I know, is a platform that a lot of people like. Even TikTok, um, Instagram as well. Any platform you like. Do not feel pigeonholed by Pinterest. I do personally enjoy Pinterest, but I have been a Pinterest millennial since like 2008, so that's just me. But the reason people say to make a Pinterest board of style inspiration is because it helps you have a larger view of what you gravitate towards and what you want to wear. It helps you have a place where you can look at everything in one place instead of just like thinking through things and like making a note here, making a note there, going out looking for this one piece, not finding it, forgetting about it. It kind of gives you a place to organize your thoughts and the things that you like and gives you the ability 
opportunity to look back at them later and explore things that you have been gravitating towards in the past and kind of like rejog your memory in that way. The thing about making a Pinterest board though is that it's only effective if you make it effective. You know, you can go through and you can add every single outfit and every single vibe that you like to it. Good, great do that first go on instagram go on pinterest even when you see things like on tiktok or youtube go to the trouble of like having whatever app you're using whether it's pinterest or not on your phone or having the extension on your computer so that you can go and you can put that outfit or that thing that you like on your board so that you're not just limited by the things that are already on the platform that you're using if that makes sense you can create posts of your own from things that you see in your life even like if you see an outfit from one of your friends that you like take one of their instagrams and put it on your pinterest board because the idea again is to give yourself inspiration and information about what you like what you want to wear and what you gravitate towards so the first level of creating your pinterest board is just that pin everything take the extra little step to if you see something that's not on pinterest on the platform you're using take it put it on your mood board so that you have it so you have a really true overview of what you like and what you are wanting to wear so when you're first making your like inspo board like this don't be picky we're gonna be picky and like whittle this board down later as we like work with it and like use it to gain some more specific insights and information into things that we might want to purchase or acquire but right now we're just kind of gathering a conglomeration of everything that attracts us and everything that we like so don't look at something and be like oh i wouldn't like how that would look on my body oh i wouldn't wear that super often oh that doesn't fit my lifestyle and like reject it from the board if you like it add it to the board and we'll figure out what it is we like about it later just be really open and reset your thoughts and just add the things that you like really connect to your like sense of attraction to fashion and just have fun adding whatever it is that interests you to this inspiration board without judgment or veto. Literally one night, once you've had like a little sippy sip, little puffy puff, little gummy, whatever your thing is, go and like add things to it then and like see, see what comes up. You must first bear your soul truly to the board for it to serve you. Next, think about what you actually wear. What do you gravitate towards in your own closet that you like? Not that you just wear it out of necessity, but that you feel good and comfortable in. Then go on your little platform, go on Pinterest, go on Instagram, go on TikTok, whatever, and find inspiration of outfits that look like that and incorporate those into your Pinterest board. Because the thing about building a wardrobe is it's only fulfilling really truly at least this has been my experience if you actually wear the clothes you have there have been some things that i was so excited to thrift and so excited to buy that i straight up never actually wore out or I did once and I discovered that I hated, for whatever reason I hated wearing it. I did not like how it felt. I did not how, like how it looked on me. I did not like how I felt in it, whatever. And like there are a couple things I can specifically remember. There was a plaid skirt from Express. It was kind of expensive. It was really nice. It was really cute. Hated how it fit me. Hated how it looked on me. Was not an issue with the, gar the garment was just not gonna fit my body how I wanted it to. It wasn't gonna look how I wanted it to. And then there was another sweater from the thrift store. It was like this really chunky, really warm, thick, gray sweater with like these oversized sleeves and like these little puff balls on it hated how it looked on me was never going to be able to wear it in southern california pretty much ever at all and was taking up a huge amount of space in my closet and broke two of my hangers because it was so heavy and my hangers are cheap i only feel good about having things after the initial purchasing high if i actually consistently wear them and they make me feel good and so i really have had to look at the things that i enjoy wearing that i already have and then try and build a little bit off of that like i love in the summer the ability to throw on a cute t-shirt that i love this is one of them i love this thrifted queen t-shirt it's so comfy it is so soft it ties up like a dream and it has colors in it to where it matches with a bunch of different tones absolutely love it so i have my t-shirt 
t-shirt collection and then I have my bike shorts I used to only have a couple t-shirts that I really loved and then I had one pair of black bike shorts I was on the hunt and I built that out when there were bike shorts on clearance when there were bike shorts on sale I was there when I had a gift card to Target to get some of the Wild Fable and the Colsey like ribbed seamless bike shorts you know I was there like I narrowed down the things that I liked and that I wore and then I built out my collection of that so that I had more options in my arsenal for those outfit recipes that I knew I gravitated towards if that made sense. Another example is I really like really long um maxi or midi kind of vintagey pattern skirts. In my head I call them teacher skirts um because it's what like a lot of teachers I know would wear but they match with a lot of different things and I just like having that as a bottom because I feel like I can put boots, I can put tights, I can put sandals, I can put a lot of different things with them. And so I had, again, one or two that I really liked. And then when I was out thrifting, I made a point to check out the skirts and really go through them and see if there were any that striked my fancy. So think about the outfit recipes that you wear. Think about the outfits that you already have that you love. What is it about them that you love? And then go on a hunt for more inspo that matches that so that you can see how you can take that good feeling that that outfit or that outfit recipe gives you and kind of spread it out or figure out what about it or figure out how you can also use the pieces that you already have for that outfit recipe. So again, like I said, I really liked wearing bike shorts and my t-shirts. I have since figured out a lot of different ways to wear my big t-shirts that aren't pairing those two together. So all that to say, the next level of adding to your Pinterest board is adding outfits that you already like to wear and things that are familiar and comfortable to you. So now that you have your Pinterest board built, you've gone through and you've added your dream outfits, things that you felt attracted to, vibes that you felt attracted to, pieces that you love. Be really honest with yourself about what you enjoy wearing. Like I know I hate wearing things that I feel like if I bend over, my ass is gonna fall out or like I'm gonna flash someone. And so I know that about myself. And so I, when I was looking through my Pinterest board, I would see things that had a really short skirt and I would know, okay, Okay, so that look we really like but we need to have it be like a squirt or we need to put some like Nike Pro type things under it or some Spanx under it or whatever and figure out how to make that work for me. Another good example is like I will not wear heels all of the time. I will wear heels, they just have to be interspersed. Like I will wear heels probably like one fourth of the time. And so I need like other shoe options that I will actually wear and like for those other three fourths of the time. Um, because if I just have heels and sneakers and Birkenstocks, I'm just gonna wear the sneakers and Birkenstocks and that's it. So I figured out I really like chunky shoes. I really like chunky sneakers. I really like platforms. Um, I really like a loafer. Um, I'm not a big fan of a ballet flat. And so I sought out specifically chunky shoes, platform shoes, loafers that I knew I would like to add to my inspiration board because I knew that that was something that I would actually wear as opposed to pinning all outfits with heels where and I knew that like I was only really actually gonna wear heels one fourth of the time, if that makes sense. Sorry, I'm like right in front of a window and there's a spider crawling up the window and it's just, it's causing a distraction. Or if you have a bunch of formal, flouncy, unfunctional stuff pinned, but you live like a lifestyle that doesn't really match with that, check out some videos from some creators or some ideas on how to wear some flouncy, formal, kind of bigger pieces in more casual, daily, more wearable ways. It's definitely a thing. People love these things too, and people want to find ways to wear them as well. You just have to find those people to gain inspiration from them. Looking at a Pinterest board of like dream outfits and stuff is great, but it wouldn't actually be brought into reality unless I thought about when and where and how I would actually wear those outfits in real life. So for like the short skirt thing, I have a couple really cute short skirts now or skirts that have like a built in little Spanx shorts with them. So I feel comfortable wearing that look whenever I want now. And like that problem is eliminated. So, so. you have all of these pins. What 
what do you do with it now? Well, first you kind of want to work with what you have, right? You really, really, really don't want to start buying unless you know what you're buying for and you have a real like certainty about needing that item because otherwise then you feel like, at least this is just me speaking personally, you feel like excited about buying that item and the potential for it, but you're not absolutely certain how much you're going to use it. You don't want to buy until you are certain. That's not to say that every single like clothing piece is super high stakes when you buy it, but you do want to know why you're buying something and not just be like kind of hoping something will work out most of the time. Sometimes it's okay to hope something will work out, especially if it's thrifted and it's like low price, but you know what I mean. So look at your board and look at some of the outfits that you have and ask yourself if you have any of the pieces to build those already. I kind of done it in my making Pinterest outfits that I like video, but it doesn't have to be exact. Think about if you have something similar that you can swap for one of the pieces in an outfit that you don't have, but you have everything else. Once you've done that, what pieces are missing? Look and see what pieces pop up in a bunch of outfits that you don't already have or are in a bunch of outfits that you have everything else, but you just need this one little thing and write them down. You might not necessarily buy all of these things, but it's good again to just scoop everything in to a pile so you can look at it all at once. That's kind of what the Pinterest board was doing, like I was saying. Put everything that you come up with when you're scrolling through this lovely board that you've made for yourself. Put everything that you see repeated that is missing from your wardrobe that you think would complete these outfits or that you... I don't know what goes in or that you see yourself wearing, or you see it on people all the time and you just really love it. What are those pieces? What are those center pieces that you really just are feeling pulled to and that you really feel like you need them to complete your wardrobe? It might not be true. You might not be able to find all of them, but write them down and see what they look like. Then look at that list. See if any of those things kind of serve the same purpose. See if any of those things are in season right now. Are any of those things going to be on clearance right now? And then from that, you can kind of begin to form your shopping thrifting list. Decide what things you think you can thrift and decide what things that you think you want to purchase. Go thrifting first. Check online retailers. Check online thrifting retailers first. And then once you've gone thrifting, then you've narrowed down your list from the things you found thrifting and then you can pick and choose the things that you want to buy from retailers and frequently what you can do is you can wait until the end of the season that they're being sold in and then buy them on clearance. This doesn't work with anything, everything because of course things sell out but especially if you're like a size small or something, a size that like they have a lot of, then you can often do this to get things for a discounted price and so it's cyclical, you know, you have ebbs and flows of having great thrift trips and great thrift finds and then having a bunch of inspiration and then seeing a bunch of outfits you like or being on the hunt for one piece and then finding it or being really happy with what you're wearing and not really being shopping a lot because you're actually pretty happy with the outfits you have right now and like you'll go out with a friend or two like shopping and thrifting and stuff but you might not actually buy anything you know it's incorporating it into your life as something that you're working on as an and is enjoyable and isn't a chore and however that looks like to you is up to you there's something to finding a balance between being picky and letting clothes come to you. So I definitely think there's something to finding something at random in a thrift store that you're not necessarily there for, but it's exactly perfect, it's exactly what you've been looking for. And so yeah, you pick it up, absolutely. But aside from those situations, I have grown very picky about the things I buy in terms of the threshold that they have to meet in terms of being perfect for me, for me to purchase them. I have to feel good in my body when I'm wearing them, so they do actually have to fit me. I have to be willing to walk around and wear them for a reasonable amount of time in which I would actually wear that garment in my life. So I have to sit there when I'm trying something on or when I'm looking at something and think about if it would actually fit me, I would feel comfortable in it, I would feel good in it, and would I actually feel happy wearing it all day? I would have to think about 
scenarios that I could wear it in. I would have to think about places and things that I've done before where I could wear that and I can see myself being happy in it. It really has to like check all of these boxes and fill all of these requirements in order for me to consider putting it in my cart. And don't get me wrong, a lot of things fulfill these requirements. A lot of things I feel like I can definitely see myself wearing. I feel good in them. I like how they look on me. I like the feel of them and I can definitely see myself wearing over and over again. And then there are things that they check some of them but not all of them. I like how it looks on me, but it's kind of expensive and I don't really think I would actually wear it that often. You know, being picky about things like that because the things that I'm trying, thing I'm trying to avoid is having things in my wardrobe that I don't actually wear or that I have the option to wear, but I skip and I pick something else and then I pick something else the next time and I pick something else and then I never actually end up picking to wear that thing because I don't actually like it. And don't get me wrong, I have favorites and stuff, but I don't wanna bring anything into my wardrobe that I know I'm never going to choose to wear because the thought of wearing it all day is horrific to me, if that makes sense. But know that it's something that will continue to evolve. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. And then we are building up our wardrobe without having to make these like huge committal purchases and feeling like we're spending a ton of money on a bunch of new clothes. It's really supposed to be something that you do over time that's fun. You have some free time, you make a plan with a friend, you go thrifting, and then you have your list of things that you are on the hunt for and you're excited to add to your wardrobe because you know what you're going to wear them with. You know that there are things that are going to fit into the aesthetic that you're going for, for the outfits you're excited to wear and the things that you know what you would wear day to day already because that is how you've curated your inspiration board. And so you're locked, you're loaded and you can relax when you're shopping because you know what you're there looking for. That being said, shopping, especially shopping in person, is a little bit stressful. Like I said in the beginning of the video, you got a body and you got a budget. And both of those things are anxiety inducing, stressful things to contend with, at least for me personally. And so I do what I can when I'm shopping to mitigate that and try and make it an enjoyable experience. I try and give myself a little bit of wiggle room with my budget, especially for pieces that I'm really excited about and I feel like will be absolutely perfect but I definitely am a big fan of the carry it around the entire time and make decisions at the end game, especially with thrifting. But I do always thrift first because that really helps me feel good and solid and secure about the purchases that I'm making that might be a little bit more expensive because they are from firsthand retailers. I know that I have tried to find those things secondhand and I know that I've picked this one out that I'm buying because it's going to fill a hole in my wardrobe that I've been looking to fill and I am confident about buying it because I know I'm going to wear it and the price per wear will go down, hopefully. I also really, really, really try and remember that we are not obligated to dress for the male gaze. The male gaze is for flattery. The female gaze is for interest. There's a TikTok sound that's kind of been going around like highlighting that. And I think that's such a great way to describe that. Obviously, society has conditioned us to want to dress for the male gaze, to want to dress for flattery. And so if that's how you feel good, if that's what you want to do, absolutely more power to you, but it is not your responsibility to look thin, to dress for flattery, to be a certain size. Your body does not have any responsibilities except for to exist as your body and to take care of you. And if it is doing that, then you are so incredibly lucky and society is very bold to try and put any more responsibilities upon your body than that. So don't fucking let it. It is not your body's job to fit into clothes. It is your job to find clothes that fit your body because your body is yours and you are dressing it in things that feel comfortable for you and your body. Clothes can be made and changed. Your body is on a higher plane than clothes. So don't let fucking clothes make you feel insecure about something that is so much more important and valuable and ever-changing than and clothes. That being said, it can still be hard. Dressing rooms are a very difficult place to be in and especially like at a thrift store if you can't really try things on then you get home and things don't fit. Um, it just sucks and it's disappointing. So be prepared for that and give yourself 
some room for love you know don't let the store you're going to be the last place you go to have another errand to run get a little snack get a little treat um get a little coffee and like go to the grocery store after have something to do so that you don't just have to like sit in the icky feelings from whatever the clothing trying on or the clothing buying um experience has made you feel because that's natural we all deal with it society sucks um standards suck money sucks and so you know we all have our ups and our downs with it and there is nothing to be ashamed of there because we've all experienced it before we all know what i'm talking about and so give yourself a little love and a little um recovery period from that after you go to an in-person store or a thrift store if you need to i know that can be like something that is really helpful because then i'm not coming home and like looking in the mirror and trying on more of my clothes and just going further and further down to that rabbit hole i am out of the store on to do something for myself literally like a couple of dollars like a small little like drink or whatever from a dutch bros and then take that and then go and have another errand to run while i sip that or while i munch on my little Little treat and then I'm doing something else I have my mind on something else that is not close connected and we're kind of moving through the feeling instead of getting stuck in it um, that's just kind of my way that I've lately been strategizing um, struggling with shopping for clothes in person when it's made me feel like crap for one reason or another or maybe you don't have any of those problems and this um, advice is worthless to you or maybe it just sounds fun to get a treat and go to the grocery store after shopping I don't know but anyway if you got anything from this video I would like it to be that your clothes are for you and your wardrobe is for you and it should fit you and it should make you feel good and you should be excited to put your clothes on because they make you feel like you and they make you feel like they were made for you and you picked them out but building a wardrobe and a reality that is like that is not necessarily as easy as the internet can make it seem sometimes and so this is the process that i have been going through in the past couple years to really weed out and weed through the offerings um within fashion and the things that i want to bring into my wardrobe and then weed through the things that i have um and figure out what i gravitate towards and then curating my wardrobe when i'm getting rid of things and when i'm buying things towards a place where I am comfortable and happy with every single thing that I have and I can say that I absolutely love my entire wardrobe. We're not 100% there yet but we are getting there and these are kind of the steps we're taking and the rules that we try and operate within. Let me know if this was helpful or interesting to you in any way. Thank you so much if you've made it already all the way to the end of this video. It means so, so very much to me. Thank you so much for watching all of my videos in the past few months. Um, I've just gotten a lot of new subscribers, so I wanted to say hi and thank you guys so much. I'm so, so freaking happy you're here and I love, love, love talking to you guys every week and so I cannot wait to see you next week in the next one subscribe if you would like to be here for that like this video if you liked it and there are plenty of videos that i've posted prior to this go ahead and check those out check out the shorts as well follow me on tiktok it's linked below i can't wait to see you next week Mwah.